Welcome back, scientists. I am Mr. Steyer, and this is Mr. Steyer's Classroom. And today, we are talking about the tall grass prairie ecosystem. And your goal is that you can explain that organisms can survive only environments in which their particular needs are met. We spent a lot of time talking about food chains and food webs and what plants need in order to produce their own food, how energy cycles through an ecosystem. But we need to understand how important those individual ecosystems are for the organisms that survive there to get what they need. So the first thing we need to think about is what are some of the things that you need to live and survive? Now, I know that some of you blurted out some absolutely ridiculous responses, but the truth is what you need to survive those basic needs are you need food, you need water, you need warmth, and you're going to need some type of protection from the elements. So that could be a shelter, but you definitely need food, water, warmth, and a shelter. And if you think about it, wherever it is that you live, it does provide those needs. You know, you probably have running water. Um, you probably have a way to keep your food cold or to store your food. You probably have tools inside of your home or wherever you live for cooking that food. There's more than likely a roof and walls and there's surfaces that protect you against the wind and the rain and there's probably heating and in a lot of situations cooling systems to keep the air at a comfortable temperature for you to survive. Now, could you survive without your home? Some of you absolutely could. Some of you are saying that, yes, indeed, if I did not have a house, I would be able to survive. And some of you are saying, absolutely no way. I can't sleep anywhere but my own bed. And there is no way I could survive without my home. Well, what we're getting at here with this discussion is we are saying that there's specific needs and there's things that are in your home that make it easier for you to survive and live there. And maybe some of you are just saying, I cannot survive without my parents. I need to be home because that's where they are. Or some of you are saying, uh, I need to be at home because that's where my pets are and I need them to survive. <clears throat> and some of you are saying ridiculous things like that's where I have Wi-Fi, so that's where I need to survive. But that is not a basic need in order for you to be able to survive. Again, your basic needs are going to be food, water, warmth, and shelter. So if we look at these bison on this page right here in front of us, if we look at them, do these bison, do they have what they need in order to be able to survive? Are their basic needs being met by the tall grass prairie ecosystem. And specifically, when we look at this, what are the physical characteristics of the environment that you notice in the photo? Well, if we look at this photo, we notice that there are bison who are living in the tall grass prairie reserve in Oklahoma. So these are tall grasses goldenrod, um, probably some blue stem, some bunch grasses in there, that they're going to use some corn flowers, I think, that they're going to be able to um, use in order to be able to survive. So when we jump into this information here, we are going to be focused on reading to know how the environment determines which organisms can survive in an ecosystem. So it says here, these bison live in the tall grass prairies of North America. All of the plants and animals in the tall grass prairie interact with non-living things in their environment. 
Some of these things are physical characteristics, such as summer and winter, temperatures, amount of rainfall, and the kind of soil. Grasses grow in the deep fertile soil. Animals drink water and breathe air. These organisms also interact with other living things in the prairie. You would not find wild bison living in a desert. The grasses the bison eat do not grow in dry, the dry conditions of the desert. Organisms that live in the tall grass prairie are able to get what they need to survive from this ecosystem. An ecosystem is all the living and non-living things that interact in an area. A healthy ecosystem is one in which many times of, types of living things are able to meet their needs. So we know that we're going to have living and non-living things in this tall grass prairie ecosystem. Like the sunlight that is helping these plants grow, that is a non-living thing, but it's essential to this ecosystem. The air, the soil, the rocks that are around, the clouds, the cloud cover, the fog, the mist, the rain, all of those would be non-living things that would be essential to these animals and the survival of these plants in this ecosystem. So again, what are the two categories of things that make up an ecosystem? The two categories are the living and the non-living things. So we're gonna have the two categories are the living and the non-living things that interact in an area. That's what an ecosystem is. Those are the two categories that make up the ecosystem. And a system is just a group a group of things that work together. The word ecosystem is made up of the two words that mean home and system. So if we think about that, how is an ecosystem a home system? Well, it's a home system because the living and the non-living parts interact with each other to make a home in which the needs of the organisms that live there are met. They are able to have that food, water, warmth, and shelter that they need in order to survive. What characteristics of a tall grass prairie did we read about? Well, some of the characteristics of a tall grass prairie, some of them are the physical characteristics, such as the summer and the winter temperatures, the amount of rainfall, and the kind of soil. Um, those are some of the characteristics of a tall grass prairie. How are the particular needs of these birds being met in a tall grass prairie? Well, let's look at our captions and find out more. So horned larks live in the tall grass prairie. They weave their nests from the fine grasses. Adults feed on the seeds of the grasses and wildflowers they feed insects to their young. So how are the horned larks able to have their needs met by the prairie? Well, the tall grasses are there that they can weave their nests from, there's seeds all around that they eat, and there's wildflowers that are also going to be part of their diet. And insects that they can use to survive. So it has the food, it has the shelter, they're going to be able to create the warmth they need from their grass nest. And there's going to be the water that they're going to be able to find to survive. Because again, this is not a desert. These burrowing owls live in a nest dug in the soil of the prairie. So again, we have these burrowing owls and the, the soil meets their needs because they can build a home there. It also is going to tell us, if we go back to our food web and our food chain, we say, what does it eat and what eats it? So it's going to be able to find what it needs to eat to survive in this tall grass prairie ecosystem. So how are these particular, how are the needs of these birds being met in the tall grass prairie? Well, the grasses grow there. They use them to make their nests. The horned lark eats the seeds and the grass and the, the grass produces. The soil provides a place for the burrowing owl to make its nest. 
these birds are able to find everything that they need in a prairie ecosystem. Now, typically we would think that birds could only survive in the woods where they have a tree to put their nest in. But we have evidence right here that birds will survive in a prairie ecosystem as well. Now, let's think about this. Let's try to think critically about what we know here. What would happen if we released a group of polar bears into this grassland ecosystem? Now, I know that image is absolutely hilarious in our minds, but what would happen to the ecosystem and to the polar bears if we released polar bears into this ecosystem? Well, there's a good chance that neither the ecosystem nor the polar bears survive. And probably the polar bears are going to die off first. And why do we think that? Because polar bears generally live in cold regions and they feed on animals, not on food found in this ecosystem. Even though we might say that a bison and a polar bear are similar in size, they have very different needs, which is why they live in very different ecosystems. So if we reflect on what we've learned today, we know that an ecosystem is all the living and the non-living things that are in a particular area. Questions that you're going to be answering as you go forward is can you identify what some of those non-living things are that we see in our image here in front of us in this tall grass prairie ecosystem? And how do the physical characteristics of an environment help support the organisms that live there? Well, we can think about what we just talked about with our polar bear. And so why wouldn't a polar bear be able to survive well there well at all? And why wouldn't we see these bison in a desert? So we can think about those things in order to be able to explain how the physical characteristics of an environment help support the organisms that live there. In all of this work we've done here today, our focus has been our ability to explain that organisms can only survive in environments in which their particular needs are met. Their needs have to be met in order for them to be able to survive. As always, scientists, make certain that you are a critical thinker. You are taking in all of the information you can. You are making good decisions as a scientist would. Thanks for being with me here today. I am Mr. Steyer, and this is Mr. Steyer's Classroom, and I will see you on the next one. Bye!